Hi, this is Joe Cotter. I serve as the Deputy Director for the National Network of State Teachers of the Year, and I'm honored to have Ryan Devlin with me tonight. Ryan teaches 11th grade British literature, 8th grade computer science, and two high school electives, creative writing and digital media, at Brockway High School in Jefferson County, Pennsylvania. He is also the 2014 Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Teacher of the Year and was recently named a finalist for National Teacher of the Year. Ryan, congratulations and welcome to our program. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. I, boy, what a journey you've been on. I mean, you kind of <laughs> taking us through your career from that first year to finalist for National Teacher of the Year. Right, well, I started at Brockway Area High School seven years ago, and it was kind of interesting because this is actually the high school that I graduated from, and it was, you know, that's not necessarily a goal that I was going to come right back to my alma mater, but when I graduated from Waynesburg, there was an opening there, so I went back, and it was really interesting when I started teaching because a lot of the teachers that were there were teachers that I had had as a teacher when I was a student in their classroom, so it was kind of neat to actually start working with them and see them on a, on a different aspect. But um, I've been teaching that for seven years, and um, I've been doing 11th grade English, which has been a, a really fun group. I always thought I wanted to teach middle school, but um, I really love the opportunity to work with high school students. And I've got the opportunity to get involved with several things throughout the years. We started up the Dancing with the Stars program at my school that I lead. Also been involved with organizing our mock interviews every year. And we didn't have a cross-country team, but that was also something that I felt would be a great addition to our programs that we have at school. So we started a team up, and we uh, now have a pretty big team there. So it's just been a lot of fun getting to work in the community where I grow up and really get to know the students well, along with their families, and um, it's been a great, great journey. Wow. Well, let, let me ask you this, because one of the questions I, I, I find really interesting, the responses to is, you know, what was the response from your family, colleagues, and students when they heard that you had been named Teacher of the Year and a finalist for National Teacher of the Year? And I want to kind of, I would think it would even have been a really more interesting dynamic considering this is where you grew up at. So what was that like for everybody? It's just been a really interesting experience. I've been getting so many cards in the mail and comments through social media, and um, it's really neat. Everybody in the town of Brockway has just been really supportive of this accolade and um, has been really excited about even getting our name out there on a national level because, you know, it's not really just an award about this teacher. It's really about the school and the community, and they've been really supportive and excited about it. My students have been asking me questions, and when they found out, I'll, I'll be meeting President Obama. They've been wanting to know what it is. I'll, I'll stay in it when we have that moment to meet in the Oval Office. But they've just been uh, so kind and have been full of just uh, a lot of great remarks to make me so excited about moving forward. Well, how's it been for teachers you've had in the past? I would think I would think this would be the highlight for a lot of them to know that the work that they put in, you know, so many years ago, they could actually watch it you know, come to fruition right in front of their eyes as you started your career there as a student and also have been there as a faculty member. I mean, can you kind of explain that a little bit? Sure. Well, what was really interesting was I had been giving a lot of speeches this year as the Pennsylvania Teacher of the Year, and my superintendent asked me if I would speak in front of our whole faculty in our entire district. And to be honest, out of all of the speeches that I gave, this was the one that I ended up being the most nervous about. Um, just because they were all the people that I work with and so many of the teachers that I had when I was a student. And um, it was just a really neat opportunity for me to kind of get to, you know, share my message about teaching and also mention so many of them in it. Um, especially my first grade teacher, who was probably one of the main reasons I became a teacher. She was in the audience. Her name was Miss Worky, and she was crying. And uh, it was just a, a neat moment to be able to share that with them because, um, like I said, you know, they're my coworkers, but they were also my teachers as well. So it's, it's well, I think that's great because you know a lot of the high school teachers. It's it seems like it's easier for us to maybe stay connected with our students post graduation because it's it's so close. But for a first or second grade teacher, I get it does get easy to lose contact. My wife's a second grade teacher, and and you know we talk a lot about you know 
just how her students have gone on and done great things, but I would think that would be such a special moment, especially for a teacher like that that impacted your life and, you know, really helped lead you into teaching. So uh, congratulations again on that. Um, I guess I would like to also know, because every state's a little bit different, how do you, how is the Teacher of the Year selected in the state of Pennsylvania? Well, we go through a kind of a long process. It starts off with nominations. You can be nominated by students, colleagues, um, by your school and your district. And then from there, when it moves to the state level, you have to submit some applications, um, talking about your philosophy of education and what, what it is that you do in the classroom differently. And they let it down to 36 finalists. Um, from there, you have to submit some more longer essays. You also have to actually videotape some of your lessons, which is a really interesting process if you've not gone through that. Um, and then from those videotapes and from some additional conversation that they have, they lower it down to 12 and, and then down to 1. Okay. And when were, so when was your, uh, when were you named the Pennsylvania Teacher of the Year? We, um, we go from December to December. So I was the Teacher of the Year from December of 2012 all the way to December of 2013. So I represented us for the, the past year, actually. Okay. And then we do the national activities um, a year later, so they aren't all thrown into one well, year. Well, that's really nice. You get a chance to really get deeper in the experience. I, I would think that would be a wonderful uh, thing for you to be able to walk through it that way so that when you come into the national experience, you've already had so much more training. And I know the PA toys are pretty active. How do, how do they work with you guys, the past teachers of the year, um, to provide, I guess, a resource for you to lean on? We've been, you know, really utilizing social media um, in terms of keeping in contact with all the other Pennsylvania teachers of the year. We're you know, emailing back and forth sometimes. We have a group on Facebook where all of the past Pennsylvania teachers of the year, along with some of the finalists, um, you know, talk and share things that are going on within their classroom. And we meet up several times throughout the year. We have some different events where we get together and we mentor college students. Um, we call it the TEACH program. And that gives us an opportunity to re reconnect there as well. And it's been really great. Some of the people that I've met through the program, I've become so close enough with that when I'm traveling around the state and they find out that I'm in their area, we get together, we have dinner. I've even stayed at their house a couple nights rather than going to a hotel. Because once you get a group of teachers together and you just start teacher talk, it just never ends. That's, that's awesome. And, you know, for, can you describe a little bit, I guess, some of the changes that have taken place in your life over the course of the last year, things that maybe were unexpected? You know, I think so many people have a vision of what being a teacher is like, but the Teacher of the Year experience for me was, was very different from what, I, what my regular day was like. So, I mean, I'm just curious how it's been for you. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, it has definitely been an interesting year. I've grown a lot in so many different avenues. And I've always been so passionate about teaching, and I have so much respect for teachers. But I'll tell you what, it's been a great opportunity to really be able to travel outside of my classroom and to have conversations with other educators and hear about the challenges that they're facing. And um, you know what, I didn't think it was possible, but right now I even have more respect than I've ever had for teachers, as I've heard about some of the obstacles that teachers are working through, the challenges, and um, it's, it's been neat. But one of the other parts that's been interesting about the year is you're doing work that you're not used to normally doing as a classroom teacher. You're up in front of the public, you're giving speeches, you're you know doing some interviewing and um, some writing as well. So I really enjoyed that component of it, especially the networking, because I've had so many different perspectives on the profession that have really enabled me to kind of grow and learn as well. And, you know, it's really fascinating just networking with some of the other teachers. They give me lesson plans and ideas that I take back to my district and I share with other people. Um, you know, in just this past couple weeks, I've been adopting some lessons that I had heard about when I had met. Um, actually, it was the Arkansas Teacher of the Year. He was telling me a little bit about his classroom, and we took an idea from there. So um, it's let me grown in a lot of different ways. Well, tell me a little bit about your classes. How, how do you structure them? What, what uh, you know, what is your philosophy for reaching kids or delivering instruction? I just like to know, learn a little bit more about that. Sure. 
Well, in my classroom, I like to do things a little bit differently than maybe the traditional model. We don't utilize textbooks. I don't have a classroom podium, which keeps me from doing any kind of major lecturing. And um, all of my students are on a laptop. So we have an evolving curriculum, depending on what are some of the relevant topics within the news or within our pop culture for teenagers. Um, I like to try to incorporate those topics into it. Um, within my classroom, we do a lot of group projects, a lot of collaboration. I really stress the importance of creative thinking. If you were to kind of take a glance at my classroom, you would notice that I set the students up in pods. They're in groups so that they can work together. And everything is non-traditional, including the walls. I've got lime green wall on the one side and neon orange on the other. We have bean bags. Um, we're utilizing technology really frequently. And um, I always keep in mind what it was like for me when I was a high school student. Um, so I make sure that I don't use any worksheets or anything that's going to be boring or perceived that way by kids um, so that I can make it a really engaging, hands-on interactive experience because I feel like when they're engaged, that's when we're going to get well, the Well, if a community member results. came in, and I'm sure they're in your classroom all the time because most of the teachers in the year I meet, that's the way it works. But um, very, sounds like a very traditional or different setting than what a traditional classroom would look like. And everybody's not exactly setting an app, apple pie order, and kids are up moving around and doing things. Um, how do you help outsiders come in and understand that that's one of the most powerful types of learning, where kids are up and they're collaborating, they're moving, and they're engaged, and you know they're working on teams and they're brainstorming instead of sitting at desk doing things? Because you know. I think that's going to become more and more the model, but it definitely has been in the past. So if people were looking at you for an old school example, and they're like, what in the world is Ryan doing? How would you address that to them so that they would help understand a little bit better what you're trying to accomplish with your kids? Well, you know what? That's a great question. And it's an interesting one, because when you walk through the hallways, I can definitely see someone be wondering, what is going on in room 303? Because, um, you know, in the traditional model, you're going to see students very quiet. They're sitting at their desk, and um, they're listening to their teacher go on. But, you know, in the 21st century, we have just the age of information. And um, the technology and the Internet is something that I like to utilize. Um, students just don't have to come with me for information. I want them to kind of go out on their own explorations. So really what I would say to somebody is to come into my classroom, rather than just seeing from the outside that we're up and moving and we're on bean bags and we're socializing and we're in different groups, you know, on the computers, I would come in and just take a look and ask the kids what it is that they're doing. And you'll be surprised to find out the kind of research students are doing, the projects they're putting together. And um, I would just say ask the kids. Ask the kids what they think about my class, um, if they like the way that I go about teaching, and um, get their opinion and perspective. Rather than just looking in through the window and thinking you know what's going on, to really just come in and there's always an open well, I think that's a great answer. It, it reminds me of the Pixar model that, you know, traditional animators used to be in, you know, kind of these cubicles where they would draw and do things. And, you know, that was their linear storytelling technique. And Pixar just pulled that up. And it was all about collaboration and color and sharing and, you know, getting up and passing ideas around. And it's pretty hard to argue with their success on things. So it's exciting to hear that you're doing new things. That, are engaging kids. Um, one of the other questions that I have is, I know you just got back from Arizona where you got a chance to meet the Teacher of the Year class of 2014. And typically, that's one of the biggest highlights of the year for Teachers of the Year is getting a chance to meet those other teachers that have been uh, you know, highly identified from their respective state. Uh, what was that like to meet all of those other outstanding teachers? Tell me what it felt like. I mean, what your time was like with them, what you're hoping to accomplish down the road with them. It was probably been the highlight so far of this whole Teacher of the Year experience because, like I mentioned, I've gotten the perspective of so many different educators. And I'm just really enthralled by what's going on in every state because as teachers, we're all facing some similar challenges. But each state and their legislation and the way that things are set up all have some interesting things going on. So, you know, once we started having conversations, it's just like there wasn't enough time in the day 
for me to get to go around and to talk to every teacher. And that's what's been great about knowing what's ahead because I do have some other opportunities to network with them for some trips we have coming up in the future. And like I mentioned, social media has been awesome. Every day we have um, new postings in our group where we've been sharing interviews, getting advice, sharing resources. And this collaboration that started in, in Arizona has just continued to go on. And one of the things that I've been most inspired by is just how passionate all of them are about teaching because everybody is just on fire for teaching. They love kids. They love what they're doing. And um, it was really exciting to put all of that energy in one room um, and just to have conversations and learn together. And How do you think, uh, as, a, as an organization, that what would be the best way to take and bottle that enthusiasm, that love for working with students, um, you know, the, the drive to help kids get to that aha moment and to be able to showcase excellence at the highest level? How do you think we share that message with the rest of the country that really that's how most teachers feel? I mean, that's what most of you, you talk to most teachers around the country, not just teachers of the year, but you know, most teachers. I think that's really truly how they feel about things, that they're excited, they're passionate. I mean, I, I rarely do I run across somebody that's not. And yet, you know, the public perspective, it seems like it's the exact opposite. So trying to rebrand the profession so that people understand and can see and touch the passion that you talked about, how do we get that messaging out there so that they really start to understand that America's teaching force really does care about kids and trying to move things forward? Yeah, that is a great point because I'll tell you what, we had an interesting um, workshop when we were actually in Arizona. They said, Google the word teacher. So we did it. And when we Googled teacher and we looked at all the search results that came up, most of them were negative. They were about a scandal or some sort of mugshot. Um, and unfortunately, we weren't Googling and finding all the great stories about things that are going on within the classroom. So I think, you know, that needs to be the first thing I love these teachers that are doing blogs and posting photos onto Instagram and Twitter, they are sharing the great work that they're doing with everyone, and we need to continue to do that. And I also really appreciate programs like what NSTOI is doing with, you know, recognizing state teachers of the year and national teachers of the year, because that's what we need to continue to do. We need to continue to showcase our best and brightest. And one fortunate opportunity that we as state teachers have been given is we've been given a voice. We've been able to go out and share what it is that we do, but we really need to encourage everyone to use their teacher voice. And I'm really inspired. I'm oh, sorry. I'm really inspired. I'm really inspired by um, something that I had heard about what they do in Italy. And I'm not suggesting that we do this in the United States, um, but Maria Montessori is actually pictured on the money, the currency that you can get in Italy. And I thought, wow. They really celebrate great teaching in their country if they're willing to put an educator on their money. Um, so I'm not saying we necessarily need to put any uh, teachers of the year smack on our dollar bills, but to really think about ways that we can showcase great teaching beyond. Oh, I love that. that that's that that's a have. tremendous, uh, uh, you know, story about things. Just about you know how teachers are revered. And I, one of the things you brought up was teacher voice. And that's definitely become, you know, a, a buzzword here in the last year or so. And it's, it's interesting about how people are defining teacher voice. What does that really mean to you, that a teachers have a voice and that they should be encouraged to use it? Well, you know, teaching in itself it is a lot of work. And we use our teacher voice in our classroom every day and while we're teaching our students, but sometimes we need to think a little bit bigger and we really need to advocate for our students in the profession beyond just our own classroom. And I think finding your teacher voice is kind of a bit of an evolution. I've been kind of seeing more of mine come out as the state teacher of the year as I've been going around and been asked more questions, but to really develop your voice, you just need to speak up. You need to use it, whether it's going to be in a blog or letters that you send to politicians or the communication that you have with just people within your own school or community. Um, it's a matter of really diving into that conversation and taking control of where we're going to take this profession. Why do you think people have, have they been resistant in the past to exercise their voice or do you think they 
just weren't aware that that was an opportunity existed, that existed as social media, you know, changing that? What's your perspective on those things? Well, to be honest, I think we get so busy in our own classroom that um, it's a lot of extra work and energy to, to just do that job, let alone go out and be an advocate for our profession. But secondly, I think we need to do a better job of empowering teachers. Because when I was at the, the National State Teacher of the Year conference, I left feeling so empowered. That was because I had some great pep talks and sessions, was given a lot of motivation. I was with educators that were also very passionate and, enthusiast and enthusiastic, and that really helped empower me well, even more. Obviously, so uh, as a State Definitely. Teacher of the Year, now a finalist for National Teacher of the Year, uh, you've been invited to participate in a lot of high-level discussions surrounding educational reform. Um, how do you think you've been received on those uh, a variety of different times. Do you feel like you've been, that people have listened, or do you feel like they're still put off because you are a teacher? How has that been received? I guess it really depends on where I go and what I'm speaking about. In terms of how I've been um, received, what, really one of my strengths is I love technology. I use it really frequently, and a lot of conferences and places that I've gone to have said, hey, We'd love you to teach us about technology. And, um, you know, that's been received really well. I've posted so many pins on my Pinterest and gotten people using my resources, um, and that's gone over really well. But, you know, in the midst of teaching people about technology, I've also really wanted to just build people up and empower them because being a state teacher of the year, you get a lot of, you know, kind words and people are congratulating you for the work that you do. But I think, you know what, there are so many other teachers that aren't getting that recognition that deserve it. So that's been a really big part of my platform this year as well, is going out and celebrating great teachers. Because it's not about me. It's about teachers all across our country that work really and hard. And Ryan, for before we close day. tonight, do you have any thoughts that you'd like to share with our listeners, that questions I haven't brought up? <laughs> No, you know, I just, if there are teachers listening, I just want to thank them for what they do because, you know, in teaching, we don't get, you know, Olympic gold medals. We don't have a night at the Grammys that's aired on TV, and we're not ever going to have Kim Kardashian-like fame, nor will we have the, the wealth of Kim Kardashian or any of our other professional athletes that, um, that receive big paychecks. But um, teaching matters. Um, it's important, and I'm so thankful for the uh, people that I guess I have one question about question. What's next in the line of things for National Teacher of the Year? I know that you like I said, just got back from Arizona, National Teacher later uh, later this spring. But how does that work? Well, um, there are going to be a, another round of interviews that will take place in Washington, D.C. there at the beginning of March. And, um, you know, we're going to be interviewed by the judges. We're going to be on video. We're going to do a little mini press conference. And um, just have a lot of different activities where they'll have the opportunity to, to learn about who we are and what we do in the classroom, some of our thoughts on the bigger picture, like teacher evaluation system, the common core standards. And um, I don't know, I don't really quite know yet. I haven't been through the whole process, but um, I'm kind of anxiously awaiting it. I'm sure they'll be picking well, up. Hey, I really appreciate you being on tonight. Board. Our guest has been Ryan Devlin. Ryan is the 2014 Pennsylvania Teacher of the Year and a finalist for National Teacher of the Year. Wish you the best of luck, Ryan, and look forward to connecting with you down the road. Uh, this has been Joe Fothery from the National Network of State Teachers of the Year. Check us out on the web at www.nnstoy.org.